If you saw the title and thumbnail of this video, you know why you're here. So, uh, let's not waste any time. Okay, so the origins of Chicago deep dish pizza is about as hazy as the answer to the question, is deep dish pizza actually even pizza? And oh yes, I am gonna go there. Because, well, I'm not really sure that it is. Now there's strong evidence that deep dish pizza was originally conceived at Pizzeria Uno in Chicago, either by its founder or its chef. Mm, who knows? So deep dish pizza isn't just about being deep and thick. It's It's got a lot of other things to it. It's It's more of like a casserole to me than pizza. It's just not pizza. I'm sorry. But I would argue that it is very satisfying. But there's one more thing that I think will keep you as satisfied as this pizza. Bundling your home and car insurance, and that's where today's sponsor, Geico, comes in. Just how Deep Dish combines what you love about pizza and a great hot dish, Geico allows you to combine their offerings with something that you love even more. Not only that, but you could even save some money in the process. For bundling made easy, visit geico.com today and click the links in the description to learn more. Now with all that said, let's do this, shall we? So with all of our breads, we're gonna get our dough going first. Mix together three cups or 430 grams of all-purpose flour, half a cup or 82 grams of cornmeal, two teaspoons or 12 grams of fine sea salt, and one tablespoon or 14 grams of granulated sugar. Mix that together till combined. Separately, dissolve two and a half teaspoons or eight grams of instant yeast in one and a third cup or 300 milliliters of water around 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. Start mixing in a stand mixer on medium-low speed. You can also do this by hand. Add in your yeasty water and a quarter cup or 56 grams of unsalted butter that has been gently melted, but isn't flaming hot. Just barely melted. Mix all that together till it forms a dough, then continue to knead for about five minutes or until nice and smooth. Place in a grease bowl and let that rise around one hour or until doubled in size. Now, once you got the fatty, sorry, punch the life out of your dough, dump it out on a lightly floured work surface and roll it out into a rough rectangle around 14 inches long. Slap on three and a half tablespoons or 50 grams of unsalted softened butter and spread evenly across the entire dough. Then tightly roll your dough up like you see here, cut it in half and form those two butter snakes into balls. Place your balls in a lightly greased bowl side by side, cover with plastic wrap and let it rest in the fridge for one hour. Now you can't have pizza without sauce. And in Chicago, they apparently like their sauce on the thickum wickum side. Anyway, cut four slices of bacon into half inch wide lardons. Place those in a pot over medium heat and let that cook until nice and quippy. Remove from the pot and chop till very, very fine. In that same pot, add a quarter cup or 56 grams of olive oil or unsalted butter. Heat over medium heat till nice and hot. Add in one onion, finely minced or grated. Yes, you can grate an onion. It's just a bit of a experience. <laughs> Five cloves of minced garlic and two teaspoons or seven grams of red pepper flakes. Cook and stir until your onions have cooked down and released most of their moisture. Add a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Season lightly with salt along with a small pinch of sugar to curb the acidity. Add your finely chopped bacon back and you could totally add some chopped oregano if you want. Bring that up to a simmer over a medium heat and reduce to low and let that cook down for about 15 minutes or until nice and thick. Adjust the salt levels to your liking and let it cool most of the way before using. See, I wasn't joking about a thicko mode sauce. Now, I'm sure there's some Chicagoan watching this right now that considers this to be soup, but you know, I'm, I'm happy with it. Now you can use an actual deep dish pan, but I feel like more people probably have a 10 inch cast iron skillet lying around somewhere. So lightly grease that bad boy, take out one of your dough boys, roll it out until about 12 inches wide, drape it in your pan, pressing against the walls to form it like you see here. Then separately in a bowl, mix together one cup of grated compte, Comte? Comte? The French cheese. And half a cup of grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Now this is where things mess with my head a little bit. Don't ask me why they do this. Ask the people of Chicago. So first, uh, lay down about half a pound of mozzarella, either shredded or sliced, followed by half of your Comte mixture. Comte? I, I, I. Top with any meats of your choice. You could do salami, pepperoni, cooked sausage. You know, the list goes on and on. Here I have a mix of pepperoni and Genoa salami. Finally, hit it with half of your sauce and spread evenly over your, well, it's more like a casserole or a pie than a pizza, but yeah. Hit it with a light grating of Parmigiano Reggiano and pop it in an oven set to 425 Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius for 18 to 25 minutes or until the crust is a beautiful deep golden brown. Feel free to tent with foil if it's getting too dark. Now pull out your lovely little man and let it cool for about eight minutes. Then hit it with some additional fresh grated Parmigiano, a nice glug of extra virgin olive oil, and let's taste this utterly delicious, albeit strange, Chicago tradition. Okay, so we have our, this is a casserole, let's be honest. I'm supposed to be on a diet. I am on a diet, as a matter of fact, and yet, here I am. You can see the crumb is nice and spongy. You can see the crumb is nice and spongy. You've got some nice aeration and quisp. 
My first impression on Chicago deep dish pizza was um, negative to say the least. My thoughts were like, what is the point of this? It, it annoys me because it's an inverted pizza. You put the sauce on top, like why? Chicago. Ah! But you know what? After eating it, tasting it, experiencing it like this, making it myself, it's been a while since I've had it and this really takes me back. This is a wonderful bite of pizza. If you're from Chicago and you think we did a good job, let me know. If you're not from Chicago, you should make this because it's very worth it and you can do this. <laughs> Mwah. Look, I'll be honest with you, it's not one of my favorites. But this is very good and yummy and it's a new experience for pizza, okay? Gosh darn it. All right, I'm gonna stop spitting on this. Bye. You wanna know what else is deep, plump, and full of melty stuff? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. Thank you again to our friends at Geico for sponsoring today's episode. They're helping me with my culinary journey around the United States, and they wanna help you too by helping you save money on your home and car insurance. So head down to the link below and visit geico.com today. Now let's talk about this pizza for a second. Now that we've eaten it, we've made it. Look, it's still technically pizza. It's borderline not pizza. Here's my shtick, all right? It's good, it's delicious, it's an enjoyable thing to eat. I really don't like it when people make blanket statements about food and cooking, because the reality is a true master of food and cooking would understand that there's a million billion ways to do something and that there's never really one right way to do anything in life. But it, I think it just goes too beyond what I perceive pizza to be. I don't like the fact that the sauce is on top. I just don't. I personally think it's a better eating experience the other way around. It's my own personal preference and it's how I would rather serve people who are eating my food. Nonetheless, it is still completely delicious and satisfying. If you've never had it before or you've never made it, I would highly recommend it. And this is a great place to start. With all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will We'll see you next time.